All right. Well, it looks like we have everyone who's going to be logging on with us this evening. Uh, thank you for joining us for this required community meeting. My name is Nolan Gross. I'm with Urban Design Partners. We are representing the petitioner, the Drox Group LLC, on rezoning petition 2024-004. This petition is located at 5215 South Tryon Street in the city of Charlotte and is requesting to rezone the property from N1B to N2A conditional. I'm joined this evening by the petitioner, the Drox Group, Graham Drury, as well as Michael Fess and Nick Martin with Montrose Development. Here you can see the site as it exists today, fairly wooded at 5215 South Tryon Street. Okay, a few general housekeeping items. We encourage you to ask questions utilizing the chat feature throughout the presentation. At the end of the meeting, we will go through the chat box and have a Q&A session. So we'll answer all questions that you have throughout the presentation. Since we have a smaller crowd this evening, once we reach that Q&A portion, feel free to unmute yourself and we can have a dialogue and more of a casual discussion about the site, about the rezoning petition, uh, or about any questions that you might have for us this evening. Okay, here's our 3.85 acre site located south of South Tryon Street, to the east of Southampton Road, north of Shady Grove Lane, and southwest west of Skipwith Place. Okay, so what is zoning? Why are we here this evening having a community meeting? What are all these zoning districts? So zoning is the city's method of classifying land by usage. It promotes development in a smart and reliable fashion. This chart shows current zoning districts under the City of Charlotte's Unified Development Ordinance, from least intensive place type or zoning district to most. So you have the N1A, N1B, Neighborhood 1, Neighborhood 2, all the way to TOD, which are transit-oriented developments. In North Carolina, there are two types of rezoning petitions, what's known as a conventional request, and what we're proposing, which is a conditional rezoning. Conditional rezonings have site plans associated. Uh, we're required to have community engagement, and we're committing to conditions above and beyond code standards. Uh, so this, for example, would be an N2A CD request. A few other important planning related items. So for the last several years, the city of Charlotte has rewritten its zoning and development ordinances into a, a combined unified development ordinance. VDO simplifies and consolidates while updating regulations to help guide Charlotte's development uh, for the future. Associated with that is the 2040 comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan is a living document providing a policy framework guiding our, our city's decision makers uh, for investment in both the near and long term. There's also the 2040, excuse me, 2040 policy map. This is a future land use map identifying land uses that are most suitable for future development. So these are a few important guidance and regulating documents for any rezoning request. Okay, here we can see a current zoning map for the city of Charlotte. Our site, as I mentioned, is currently zoned N1B. That's neighborhood 1B. In the general area of the site, there's numerous zoning districts. There's also some neighborhood two. There's apartments to the northwest as well as townhomes. There's R8 multifamily. That's a, that's a legacy zoning district from the previous zoning ordinance as well as UR2.
All right, here's the Charlotte Future 2040 policy map that I just mentioned. So this site is currently identified as a neighborhood one place type. However, in the area, you can also see neighborhood two, parks and preserves, commercial and campus place types. A neighborhood one place type um, is identified as a transitional zone. It it's pr promotes pedestrian friendly activity uh, with sidewalks and a variety of housing types. A little more information about the neighborhood one place type itself. You can kind of see what a neighborhood one community looks like with single family homes, duplexes, triplexes, accessory dwelling units, and pedestrian friendly sidewalks throughout. Okay, so design considerations. There's numerous things that we take into account when we're designing a site for rezoning or for land development, such as existing site conditions. You know, what is the, what is the topography on site? Where's existing foliage? There's also the City of Charlotte Unified Development Ordinance, the, the, the guiding development regulations on site, such as setbacks and buffers and tree safe. Community input, like we're having this evening at a community meeting. The Charlotte 2040 plan and policy map. You know, keeping, keeping the neighborhood one character in mind as we design this site. Existing entitlements. So what's being developed in the area and what trends do we see on nearby parcels? Pedestrian safety, walkability and connections. Traffic patterns. Uh, you know, where can we locate a driveway into the site and what type of movements will it provide? As well as green space and natural areas, trying to retain as much existing foliage as possible and creating a harmonious development in the neighborhood. So here we have our rezoning site plan for rezoning petition 2024-004. I'm gonna jump ahead to our rendered version. It's a little more aesthetically pleasing and easier to look at than the, this black and white site plan. So here's our rendered site plan showing up to 46 multifamily attached townhome units. Access to the site is via driveway along South Tryon Street. This would provide a right in, right out movement. You would not be able to make a left turn from South Tryon to enter the site, nor would you be able to make a left turn exiting the site onto South Tryon Street. Tree save is provided in the Southwest portion of the site to the West of the proposed stormwater control measure. Each unit will front on open space and have direct access via sidewalks to the property frontage at South Tryon Street, where we will install a 12-foot multi-use path. We're also providing a 10-foot Class C landscape yard along the entire property boundary. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, at the southern end of the site, that is our proposed stormwater control measure. I know it, it is highlighted blue um, to, to call out what it is. That does not mean this will be a permanent pond on site. Um, very likely it will only have water in it during a rain event. The site will be accessed via private alleys. Each unit will be rear loaded off of a 20 foot private alley with a five to seven foot driveway pad. Okay, so we've looked at kind of the blocks and the layouts of what the community is being proposed as. So here's an elevational rendering for the type of product that could be provided on site. Homes will have upgraded architectural features, such as porches or stoops, along with enhanced garage treatments.
Okay. So what does the timeline look like? What what does the rezoning process entail? So this is really one of the first steps of a rezoning petition. Tonight, March 6, 2024, we're having the required community meeting, engaging the public and in, in receiving feedback about the proposal. Tentatively, we're, we're targeting a public hearing date of April 15th. For that hearing, the City of Charlotte will send mailed notices, much like we provided for the community meeting, um, as well as provide a sign on site. So you, you will receive notice for the public hearing. You're welcome to attend. On April 30th, 2024, we're expecting to go to the zoning committee and hopefully receiving a recommendation of approval at that meeting, at which point we would go back to the Charlotte City Council for a final decision on May 20th, 2024. Now this timeline is subject to change pending any possible deferrals. If there's additional community engagement we need to have um, or, or redesign efforts on site, we may need to delay the public hearing uh, or potentially defer before the zoning committee meeting. So this could all potentially shift one month uh, dependent, but you will receive notice for that public hearing. All right, here is my contact information in case anyone has questions following the presentation. I know my name was in that mailed notice that you received, but here is my direct email address as well as phone number for our office. I'm happy to field any questions that you may have after this meeting. Feel free to call me. I uh, would love to discuss the site with you. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and transition to the question and answer portion of our meeting. Let me pull up our chat box and get that off of the screen. I will back up to the actual rendered site plan so you can take another look at that. So feel free at this point, if you have questions, go ahead and pop those into the chat box or if you feel comfortable to unmute yourself and we can have a conversation about the site and the rezoning proposal. All right, Angela asks, how will cars get in from South Tryon? So if you're heading, if you're heading looking at this plan east on South Tryon, you'd be able to make a right turn into the site. Um, if you're heading the opposite direction, you can see at Southampton Road, there is a clearance. Um, cars potentially could make a left turn or U-turn movement at that intersection. Uh, to turn around. Otherwise, they could go further down South Tryon Street to turn around. Uh, but again, this will have to be a right-in, right-out driveway because of that divided median. Angela said, I live on Southampton. It is very hard to get in and out at peak times now. Yeah, so that's that's something we're, we're looking into. Uh, we understand traffic is a concern. Uh, we are coordinating with NCDOT regarding driveways um, you know, and roadway improvements, looking at potential NCDOT projects in the area. Um, that coordination is ongoing. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the, well, thankfully, with 46 townhome units, we will not be adding um, large volume and onto the existing roadway.
Okay. Sometimes traffic backs past Southampton already. Uh, Angela, if, if traffic is a major concern in the neighborhood, you know, I'm happy to help facilitate conversations with NCDOT and CDOT uh, to look at the existing traffic patterns and look at what type of roadway improvements could be installed to help mitigate some of those. Um, so feel free to send me an email or, or give me a call and I will coordinate those conversations for you. All right. Well, if you have any more questions, Angela, feel feel free to ask them. The you know, happy to answer anything you may have at this time. But again, feel free to follow up with me after the meeting. Uh, I will let everyone know that we are recording this meeting. It will be posted online at our website at urbandesignpartners.com/rezoning. So you're welcome to review our community meeting again. Uh, if you would like a copy of our PowerPoint presentation, I'm, I'm happy to email you a copy of the slide deck as well. All right, well, we'll give it just another moment. It looks like Angela's dropped off. Sandra, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'm happy to answer anything that you may have. Ooh, Angela's back. All right, I'm happy to hang around a few more minutes just in case, um, but if we don't have anything else come through, we'll, we'll go ahead and call our meeting adjourned in just another moment. All right. Well, not seeing anything else in the chat, not not hearing any additional questions. It is now 621 p.m. We'll go ahead and call our meeting adjourned. I appreciate everyone logging on with us this evening, taking some time out of your night to hear about our rezoning proposal. Again, I'll show my contact information again, just in case you weren't able to take that down earlier. My name is Nolan Gross with Urban Design Partners. Thank you for joining us. Have a great evening.